So for the people that are living under a rock, introduce yourself, brother. My name is Robert Garcia, you know, <laughs> former world champion and uh, now uh, a trainer for many, many fighters. How many years have you been training, my friend? I started training, playing around, like just for fun, like 2002, after I retired in 2001. My last fight was in 2001. It took me about a year, a year and a half for me to get back to the gym. And, uh, and I started helping out my dad with some of the kids, uh, two of my friends that were already professional fighters, just for fun. But then in 2004, when I traveled, uh, I think it was Louisiana for for a national tournament with my with my brother Mikey. He was in the it was the National Junior Olympics, mm -hmm. and there in that tournament, I met a, a young kid. You know, at that time, you know, a 16 year old uh, Victor Ortiz, and uh, gave him my number. I, I told him whenever you need any help, you know, feel free to call me. He called me like two weeks later. Told me he was having problems at home with his sister, the boyfriend. So I, I flew him over to uh, to California, you know, put him in put him in our house. And uh, right after that, Brandon Rios, who was still well, they're from the same hometown in Garden City, Kansas. So those were my two first. Those are your first boys. Boys and. Both became champions, you know. One, Victor Ortiz didn't become champion under my my guidance because he chose to go elsewhere. And and a big story, long story, you know. We don't need to get into it. But uh, but uh, you know, they both became champions. So I guess you know that caught my attention, knowing that I, you know, the first two kids that I actually picked up, both were able to become champions. So that's amazing. That's the they definitely history. got their core from you. You know what I mean? So the rest, the rest just became history. You know, Brandon. Became a, a, a great fighter, man. Notorious, Warrior in yeah. the ring. You know, had some great fights. Uh, you know, even to a point where he was so big that he ended up fighting Manny Pacquiao. You know, mm -hmm. lost to Manny Pacquiao. But going in, knowing that you're already going in there against Pacquiao, that the promoter picked you to fight Pacquiao, that Manny Pacquiao agreed to fight you, his management team agreed to fight you, that means you made it. Mm -hmm. The purse was huge, so... You know, lot, you know, he lost to Pacquiao, but just making it there is How big of a loss is that to even make it that far, though? Exactly, you know bro. You know what I mean? So it, it's there's no lie. It's, it's a win. You know, other fighters in boxing, man, in boxing, fighters lose their titles for small amounts of money, man. You know, and, and you know, this kid lost, you know, made millions of dollars. So Brandon is one of those, you know, one of my first fighters that I brought into camp uh, with me. Uh, that I started managing and uh, became a star. You know, like I said, Victor also became a champion, also became a star. Not under me because he moved on, but but uh, still became a champion. So are you guys on speaking terms? I, well, you know, with Brandon, I talk to him almost every day. Oh, that's with Brandon, I talk to him. With, with Victor, no, because it, the the way it ended, it was kind of kind of kind of ugly, you know. Exactly, kind of up. So so we never ha we've never had a relationship. I don't have, I'm not, I'm not wishing him bad either. I'm not going to kick his ass if I see him, you know, that's not going to happen. I, I think one time, the only time that I think we, we seen each other, it was a few years back, you know, three, four years ago. Did you guys slap hands or not? We, we, we said, what's up? You oh, know, that's, what's up? See, and that's, that's it, a, you know, so there was no, so it's not like I was going to try to go kick his ass or anything like that. You know what I mean? It's part of boxing. You know what? Um. That's what a lot of people take it so personally when a fighter's training with you and then he leaves. It, it does feel fucked up and it does, it does hurt. But at the end, you know, he leaves more calm. Of course. You know, his career continues. My career's what keep on. His career's over. I'm still working. I still have a lot of fighters. You know what I mean? So it's just the way boxing is. You know, you can't, you can't. Then, this, was, this is 12, 13 years ago maybe. It hurt. It was bad. It got ugly. No, of course. But now, if I go back, that's like one of your sons leaving. If I go back and think about it, sometimes it's like that's the best thing could have happened. And uh, and and at the same time, look, it hurt them. But now we're so much better. We've done so 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 many bigger things. You know, and I've learned now that you might be training a 
uh, a great fighter, and then next fight he decides to go train with somebody else. That's it just happens. what it is. It's just the way it is. So earlier when that happened, it hurt because we, we didn't have that experience. Now, you know, just like some fighters have, have come to me from other trainers, from other managers. Well, it shows up. Exactly. Same thing happened to them, but it was early, you know, when we still took it personally. But now, now it's not like that. So what's your philosophy when you're training these fighters? Like, what do you go into thinking, dealing with them and teaching them? You know what, with, with all these fighters, we have to, uh, the, way I, the, way, the way I do it, and, and a lot of people might even criticize that, or not, not criticize, but tell me, a lot, a lot of boxing people have told me, you know, to, to a little, be a little more strict. You no, know, I let my fighters be human beings too, you know. I, I went through training camps, and I'm not saying, you know, my dad was my trainer. I'm not saying he did anything wrong, but he's old school. He's old school. He's, you know, you wake up at five in the morning, you got to go run. You got to, you know, stay on a strict diet every fucking day, which is healthy, which is good. But sometimes it just comes to a point where it's too much. Uh, you go to training camps, you're away from, from, uh, from your family. Some fighters are married. Some fighters have kids. You know, training camps were, were to a point where isolated. you're isolated. Your wife, your kids are not allowed around you. Your mom, your sister, nobody's allowed around you. Only, only, only the the trainer and the team until after the fight. You know, nowadays, the wife and the kids are at the training camp. They're all, exactly, and it actually because because I I lived it, bro, and it was horrible staying away from the family separation, from kids. anxiety, and all then, that shit. You know. Three months at a time, you know, you miss out on a lot of shit, especially when your kids are growing up. So now, you know, my brother Mikey became champion, living with his wife, staying at home every day, going home after training, you know, enjoying his kids. You know, Jose Ramirez, he comes from from uh, from Fresno, comes to uh, to to training camp to Riverside uh, Monday through Friday, Friday after training, he Boom. goes home. He goes home to spend the weekend with his uh, with his wife and kids. You know. Old school trainers wouldn't allow that. But I, 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 you know, it doesn't affect. It actually helps. It relaxes you when you're at home. Yeah, you're decompressing. Your, yes, it does, bro. There was point, there was times in training camp where, where, where you're there, you know, already two months into training camp. It's horrible, bro. Fucking. What are some, some, what are some hard times you remember from you going through training camps as a boxer and shit like that? I think the, the hardest thing, and I think it, it, it'll, it'll, any, any, any former fighter coming from the old school, old school type of training camps was the diet bro the oh, diet it, it's the thing is that back then we didn't know you know right now there's so much so much nutritionist so much has changed in in, in uh in, in the way fighters make weight right now if you see every fighter until like one or two days before the weigh-in they're still walking around with a gallon of water drinking one gallon of water a day before, I swear to God, bro, we used to drink this much water a day. Thinking, shit. thinking, water thinking, weight. thinking, thinking, water was a problem because there's just that old school mentality that thinking water was just too heavy. But fuck, the body needs water, bro. Right now, <laughs> right now, the guy, every every one of my fighters is drinking a gallon away, uh, a gallon of, of water, two three days before the before the win. Then then they cut it to half. The day before the win is the only day that they cut. They'd stop drinking water to sweat it off and then make weight the next day. So it's a lot easier. Before, we'd be cutting weight two months ahead of time. What's your favorite thing from back in the day at training camp uh, as a boxer? Man, you know what? Uh, I could say the, 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 the best thing about it and the only thing that was fun was being in camp with my friends. Because growing up in Oxnard, growing up in Oxnard, uh, you know, the gym produced fighters from, from day one, you know. So a lot of them that grew up with me were my sparring partners, were, were training with me, so they would go to camp with me. So You guys were friends all the way yes, up. Yes, yes. And, and one of them is actually still working with me now as a trainer. That's my love. assistants, and, and that's, you know, that, that's, you know that's, that's, that's true love. So that was probably the best thing in camp, being there, because we couldn't have our, our kids, our wives, our family or anything. So the friends that were there, um, we would tell my dad we're going for a little walk fuck that we're walking to the fucking ice cream <laughs> shop to buy a fucking ruby floor because you know how good that shit tasted hell yeah because we, we weren't Ruby's allowed my favorite bro. Shit, so I know we, were, we weren't allowed to uh, uh, in camp this much water small amounts of meal so we 
Nick, Dad, we're just going for a little walk. Dad, we're going to go for a little walk. We'll go to an ice cream shop right there in, 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 in downtown uh, Big Bear. There's some ice cream place. That, the village, yep. The village right there. I still, every time I go to Big Bear, I go to that place to buy me that ruby for because that shit that tastes so good, bro. Classic shit. <laughs> What uh? What's one of your most memorable moments? Period. Outside of training, just being a boxer, like what was one of your most memorable moments? Man, that's a tough one, bro. Cause I think we've had so many good moments. Uh, Name a couple. Okay. You know, I, I'd probably say some of my best moments in the ring, uh, not as a fighter, as a trainer, with Brandon Rios. As a fighter, we'll get to the trainer. As, as, a, as a fighter, fuck, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if I had any any great moments, bro. Fucking boxing's tough, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the boxing's tough, the diet, the fucking, the, you know, the sacrifices, it's tough. I, I'd probably say the last, the last time I stepped in the ring, maybe, because during the fight, it was, it was at the Mandalay Bay in a, in, in a big card. Fernando Vargas was the main event. So I fought on that card, and, uh, and during the fight, I, I don't know which round it was, but I thought to myself, and I'm thinking, I've seen my opponent in front of me, and I'm thinking, what am I doing in here? Why am I punching this guy? Why am I, you know, I, I, did, I, I swear to God, I, I thought of just giving it up, cut, walking out of the ring and just blowing the fight out like that, you know, just walking out of the ring. But, uh, but I didn't. I finished the fight. I stopped the guy. I knocked him out in the sixth round, I think it was. Fucking and the first, so we go back to the locker room. Everybody's Beautiful celebrating. Exit. And I told everybody. It's a wrap. That was my last fight. Never again will I be, will I ever go in the ring. And I never did, never wanted, never even, I was 26. I never even got the, 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 the urge to try to do it again. Four years went by, and at that time, my, my, my good friend, Chiganito Hernandez, was a former world champion who I grew up kind of looking up to, sparring with him and everything. He's, uh, he was, rest in peace, Chiganito, he was uh, nine years older than me. So I was 30. And I, you know, we used to talk a lot, and he, he called me one day, and he's like, Robert, why aren't you training, bro? Why aren't you fighting? You know, there's so many big fights out there. You know, Pacquiao was fighting at 130, Morales, Barrera, Marquez. He says, Robert, get in shape and fucking train. There's so many so many big fights and so much fucking money. And I said, nah, man, that's not. Because you got to kind of be in shape to be a fucking trainer too, right? No, well, you, you do. not. You know what? But you're actively. I mean, you're not it, just it, sitting there. We have to. Yeah, 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 to yeah, me, yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. It, just, it just kind of. Looks doesn't look too good to have a you know fuck, I don't want to mention any names, bro. But but I think I think the trainer also needs to be in in so, some kind of shape, you know. So we try to to watch what we eat. It's hard also because we're always traveling, Absolutely. we're always eating out and everything. So it's yeah, hard. Bro. We have to eat the fast food, the you know. So it, it's not easy. But you know, I haven't blown up, you know, like like other fighters or or or, or trainers. You know, I think I've 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 done okay also. <laughs> When you're finding your boxers, what is it that you look for when you're finding new young talent? Or do they just come to you? How does that work? You know what? Uh, when, when, when I first found Victor, it wasn't because of his talent. With Victor, it was his story. No parents, no dad, no mom, you know, running around the streets, you know, nowhere to go, trying to find a meal. You know, you know what I mean? Story like that. Is what I, you know, that's why I gave him my number. I had never even seen him fight. Exactly what I was going to ask. You had no idea I had, I had never his even capabilities seen him fight. or ability we, or whatever. We, uh, I had a rental and all the kids from California told me, take us to the mall. This was in Louisiana. So I took them all to the mall, but Victor tagged along, you know, hey, can, can I go with you guys? Yeah, I jump in the car. And then, you know, that's when I started talking to him. I had never even seen him fight. It was just his story. The, you know, the growing up, you know, no shoes, not, not being able to, 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 to be able to celebrate a Christmas that never had a, a Christmas uh, gift, stuff. That, that's kind of what, what caught me with him. With, with Brandon, I did see him fight. I went to see him fight and I just seen a tough, you just badass, knew he was fucking ferocious. badass little motherfucker just fucking <laughs> going out there trying to kill, any, trying to kill anybody in Absolutely. front of him. Absolutely. So, you know, so that's, that, those are the, those two stories. But then, you know, now obviously, you know, with, with like Joshua Franco, who's a world champion right now, uh, my son, 
was more involved with the amateurs then because I was already too focused on the professional fighters. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. with my Donna, with with my brother Mikey, so many big names that I was working with at that time that my son was the one, hey, you know, there's this kid, you know, from San Antonio, Texas, Hector Tanahara, Joshua Franco. You know, there's a kid from San Diego, Genaro Gomez. There's another kid from LA, Jonathan Navarro. So then my son's the one that, you know, that kind of- He had his eye out. And, you know, we go meet with him. We fly that was your Antonio. scout. <laughs> he and still is, you know, right now we have, uh, we have like four or five young kids from the amateurs. I can't say their names because I know all these other, all these other people. They they know what, they'll go after them. Absolutely, you know, I've, I've it's already happened. You know, right now there's a kid that we've been talking to, and we were very close to signing and to being to being with me and my team. You know, and, and once we start, oh, we start mentioning the names. Everybody's after him now. Now, now I kind of lost the keep kid. Keep it close I, to the vest. I kind of lost the kid already because there's so many people involved now. No, yeah, now he's. Then now he's hearing stuff from so many different people that I can't, you know, I can't. Sometimes I can't compete because there's money people that come in and you know and are gonna you know beat them because of the money. You know, it, it it happens. So I have like four or five kids right now that you know will be will make a lot of noise in, in the next couple of years. And how do you deal with the pressure from big fights and shit like that? Because, like you said, you've had some of the biggest names. You know what I mean? Like, I, th I think we're just used to it, man. You know, we. we, we in the beginning, how did you deal with the pressure? You know, well, I, shit, I, you were boxing too. I, I, you know, I was a fighter, and I, I was already. You know, I fought. I fought. I was never the the main event for or for those events, but I fought on big cards with Oscar De La Hoya, Roy Jones. Same. I fought on cards where I fought on the same card where. Where uh, Mike Tyson beat Holyfield's ear off, so I was I, I was already legendary. I had shit. already been in those in those events. You were in the building, <laughs> so I didn't. So I didn't. So it didn't. You know. So when when my first big fight, probably Margarito versus Pacquiao, epic shit. It was already something big already. You know, walking into the ring, it was already huge. You know, then obviously Maidana came along with you know with Broner, then then Mayweather, Mikey, huge fights, fucking up forty seven thousand dollars at the at the uh, at the Cowboy Stadium. You know, you know. We've, we've pretty much been there, done all that, uh, you know, and, 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 and just hoping that with the younger ones that we have, we could even do better than that. What do you tell the fucking youngsters when they're about to get into some big situations? How do you prep them? Well, one, one very important thing is they're young, so we got to prepare them, you know, not only obviously physically into a fight to go out and win, but I think, I think the, the, the best thing is so they don't, so they don't change uh, the way they are, you know, None of my fighters, none of my fighters, you see that when we go fight, none of them are, are the, the cocky type of fighters. I don't allow that. And That's if right. they are, I, they're not in my team. I've had fighters that act like that and I, I just go find somebody else because that's not my style. You know, uh, but you know, we just got to prepare them, you know, because from one day to another, their life changes. Bam Rodriguez, you know, uh, a year ago in February, he became champion. Before that, we were hurting to get fights. You know, nobody wanted to give us fights because of his weight division, small kid, 108 pounder. So nobody really cared about his, his yeah, career. Yeah, that's not the most popular fucking exactly. weight class. Yeah. So top rank wasn't interested, even though we fought for top rank a few times, wasn't interested. PBC fought for PBC a few times, wasn't interested. Uh, Golden Boy never gave me the attention. I, I kind of begged everybody for for opportunities, nobody gave me the opportunity. And then he gets the opportunity with Matchroom to fight Quadras for the for the world title. Boom. Becomes a world champion, become a superstar. So from one day to another, his life changed. But we have to, you know, be careful. Don't spend your money. Don't let people come around. You know that. You don't have kinds of new family members exactly. and new friends. All that. So all that. All, good thing is both Josh and his brother and and Bam, their brothers, their. You know their their dad and mom did a great job with them, so they uh they're they're smart kids, you know. But but it it is scary that something like that happens. That We've seen scary. it many times. We've seen it many times. Well, what do you think is one of your biggest? What do you think are some of the biggest challenges you face as a trainer? Well, I think I think I think uh, as a trainer, because we're 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 with the kids pretty much every day, all year round. Because they're they, your they, fucking kids. Pretty much, be, they become our kids. So, we've we've had so many where 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 they have a contract. Promoters treat them nice. Tr promoters are giving them fights, but then they lose. And guess what? The next day, I hear from them is Robert. That you know, we don't have any more interest in that kid. So they send me a release. You know, so they they pretty much get rid of them. 
And that's not something you, you're able to speak with about the promoter. That's just some not shit really. they make behind closed they, doors. Them and their team, the they're like, you know, what, this is you know, thing. if you if, if 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 you lose a fight or you or you or we're not interested, we could just they have the right. Okay. And they never asked about the fighters again. They never asked how they're doing. How you know? I'm dealing with them. I have to. You know, no, you can't fucking figure I it out. Keep, I, I have to keep finding another promoter or fights here, fights there to try to keep them alive because it's just the yeah, way. Yeah, you it. don't want them to let them. Managers and, and and promoters, they don't they don't do that. They don't they don't live with them. They don't see them every day. They don't care. They're, they're just a product. They're collecting. They're just a exactly. number. They're just a product. You know, with us. They become family. That's your fucking family. Yeah, you're right. You're fucking family. hearing their stuff. So we're the ones that have to. We're the ones that have to deal with retirement. Having to tell them when to retire. It hurts, bro. It hurts having to tell a kid. You know what? I think that's enough. I think you should. You should already retire. Hang it up. It hurts. It sucks. That's intense. Just thinking about that. What? We've gone through that so many times, bro. It hurts, bro. It hurts and it sucks. You know, uh, promoters don't see. Did Mike? Did Mike retire? Mike's retired. Yeah, Mike's retired. And how did you guys come to that fucking nah, realization? Nah, we were okay with that. You know, because because Mike Mike did very well in his career, and he was very smart with his money, and and uh, and was always investing and everything. So we were okay with that. We already seen that he wasn't too excited about his last fight when he lost, and you know, we were okay with him saying that's it, no more. He definitely saw some heights, not and not very many people. The elite, he's he, elite. Yeah, he, he is he, elite. He, he made it to the to the big time fights. You know the crowds, the arenas. The, you know just a big name. You know four division champions. You know I don't know how many there is, but there's not many. You know there's not many that have been four division champions. When you were doing your thing and you saw him as a younger kid, did you think he had it in him to make it this far? We never thought so. You know, <laughs> no, <laughs> you're it's true. <laughs> no, it's because he never thought so because he never wanted to box. He yeah, never took it seriously. Tight. He started he started boxing. At, at 14 and Mikey was was so smart in school that uh that we thought he was gonna be yeah this wasn't gonna be it we thought he was gonna do something in school where yeah box, like a lawyer he never be yes exactly he was so smart that he could have actually he could have been a lawyer you know came in here knocking we, uh, who's the fuck out <laughs> we uh we never thought he was gonna be a boxer but he started boxing and liked it fell in love with it and became a fourth division champion you know made millions of dollars so so you know we never that's why we probably were never too strict with him that's why when he says that's it i never want to fight again that's why we probably okay no problem we, thing. we never even fucking we never even thought you were gonna fight that's anyway. amazing yeah that's that's the that's the truth with mikey what would you say or like what would you say some of the most important things you've learned on this journey in boxing period man i i, I think i think the most important thing is you know being loyal you know to your fighters to your team that's the most important thing. Then, obviously, to the promoters, which, like I'm telling you, if, if you lose a fight, they'll give you the release. They're, they're not going to be loyal to you. They're, you're a number to them. But myself, my fighters, uh, it's, you know, fuck, it's, it's, it's crazy to say it, but because a lot of people don't even believe me, but I have close to 30, 30, 30 fighters, and I don't have any of my fighters under contract. Does that work? Because they're loyal. They're they're great kids. They love it here. They they're trained well. They they're treated well. They they uh they don't they don't need it. They don't, you know, I don't need it with them because you know we had a contract with 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 Victor Ortiz back then. Top Rank had a contract with Victor Ortiz. He still left. So they they'll find a way to leave if they want to leave. Oh, so it went bad like that. I'm a Google. It later. No, the, he had a contract with uh with with Top Rank. He had a contract with with me and Cameron Duncan at that time. Cameron Duncan was was my co-manager with, mm -hmm. and 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 he was still able to leave. You know what I mean? And that's when he went to Golden Boy, different managers, different promoter. So even even if you have a contract, you can still leave. So yeah, there's got to be some. If, little if push one of my fighters place. decides, oh, I want to move on. No, I'll, I'll, it's not a big I ass. Wish him, I wish him. I wish him good luck. Yeah, we don't got to pay a lawyer to deal with this. Because bullshit. if I have to, then I have to go through all lawyers and this and that. That's and, and then an even, hour. even if I even if I win the case, I'm gonna force him to fight with me if he doesn't want to. No, that ain't the way. I'm not gonna do that with none of my fighters. Yeah, they're probably not even gonna win at that if point. If they're not happy, then you guys can go on. And none of my fighters are under contract. They have a promotional contract, yes, because promoters need a contract. But under my team managing or training, none of my fighters have a contract. Well, what are your thoughts on the current state of boxing right now? I think I think right now with with you know a lot of people criticize you know like the YouTubers, the social media stars that are out there, like the power. The what Jake, do you think about? Jake, you know what? I could say that it, I, I could probably say that 
50 50. It's, no, no, but check this out because do I think Jake Paul could be a world champion one day? Probably not because he doesn't have the skills. He never, he's never been training. He hasn't been training since the, since yeah. the beginning. Yep. And that's what and that's what a lot of people say. Oh, how could a YouTuber make be making so much money? But I also you have to also respect their hustle. You know, he's he's actually he gets ready for fights. You know, he's not one of those uh, yeah, celebrities that just comes in to make money and fool the, the people with exhibitions and stuff like that. No, no, he's he, training. He trains. Camp. Yeah, he trains. So a lot of you know he only has like five or six fights. So a lot of people say, oh, how come he's fighting? You know, you know. Uh, uh, MMA so -so. guys, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. taxi cab drivers, uh, you know, a lot of people say that. <laughs> well, and I always say, hey, well, all my fighters, if I, if I have beginners, I'm going I'm to put them against those kind of guys too. The only difference is he's making millions doing it. And these are high and selling a lot of uh, selling a lot of pay-per-view, pay-per-view, uh, uh, pay-per-views on TV. That's the only difference because I do the same thing with all my fighters. The, the first 10, 12, 15 fights. It's against fighters that we, you know, we picked the right yeah, guy. Yeah, they're not fighting Floyd exactly. the first day. Shit don't make so, sense. So people criticizing Paul for for not fighting big names. Well, fuck, man, nobody does that in the first five, six fights. Nobody does it. And and he's just doing what, you know, does he help boxing? Well, it, it helps generate money. Absolutely. And, and, Bring awareness. And, and exactly. But, you know, could hurt at the same time because a lot of people are, are tuning into his fights. But then you have a badass fight. Uh, with with two major players, yeah, yeah, players like. at at one twelve pounds or one fifteen pounds, Chocolatito versus Gallo Estrada, crazy badass fights, and a lot of people don't even know who they are. Why? Because of the weight division. But you have Jake Paul fighting on pay per view versus fucking Silva, and everybody fucking tunes in. They sell you know a lot. You know that's the, the power difference. of social media. But I don't. But I, I, I but I also respect them. You know for hustling for doing everything they they've done through their talking, social media, whatever, they've made it and they're, they're doing great. No, that's how I feel like maybe the, I feel like that's why I said 50-50, like it's good for the awareness of the sport, but it could be bad because now people are just going to get used to seeing fucking popularity that's fights. That's true. So do you think he's good as a boxer or do you think he's trash? You know what? Uh, Realistically. As, as a beginner, as a beginner, they've, they've done... Decent. What what uh what I would do with any of my fighters? Pick the right opponents. Bring some MMA guys. Bring a basketball player. <laughs> give us a fuck. You know, we, we go to Mexico to get my guys wins. Whoever's fucking we pick down. Up, we pick up guys from you know you know what I mean just to get a win. So they're doing the same thing I would do. So so you know uh, will he ever become a world champion? I think I think you know the if, WCBC makes right, a belt right a now, celebrity that, belt exactly. That, that's, that's the only <laughs> a way. A celebrity belt exactly. That would be the way. And, you think and, that's and what's gonna happen? Why not? They, they've It'd done be belt. crazy. They do the they do the interim. They do the super. They do the regular. They do the 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 gold. The, what the is the difference between all of those belts? You know what? There's there's a what's the real belts? Look, the WBA has the 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 regular and the super, which are both considered world champions. The WBC has the, just the, the WBC. Uh, sometimes you have an interim champion in the WBC. And but they get a strap. They do. And they become, they, and they are world champions. Uh, the WBA, you know, our, the IBF is the only one that only has one. They're the one IBF. little red belt. They yep. stay with that and they don't, they don't change. Sure. That, they're, they're the only ones that do that, which is probably the, 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 the most strict one. The ones that, that, that's the one that, that demands the, the, the mandatories. You have to fight your mandatory. You have to. The others don't. The other, you know, you could have you could fighters fight. like, like Charlo, he's WBC champion, hasn't fought in two years and, and he's still champion. You know, I think at that time, at that point, at something, some point, had, something, had, yeah, something yeah, should have yeah. happened already. Yeah. He should have fought already or yeah, fight something, or should have, yeah. something should have happened already. You know, or you have somebody like Canelo who they will not force him to fight his mandatories. You know what I mean? So it, it's all about politics. Would it's you all, say that Canelo's ever ducked fights? No, not really. I, I don't I think, think so either. I think I'm just asking. The, I think he's got the power to say, I, don't, I, I fight whoever the fuck I want. Because, I mean, I know we just heard that people are saying they're the new face of boxing or whatever, but I would kind of still say Canelo might. Canelo still is. But Canelo doesn't have much time left. I think he's that's got true. one or two fights, and, that's, and that'll be it. That's my personal opinion. I, I, I don't know them. I, I, I shake their hands if no, I see No, yeah, them. yeah, yeah. They yeah, respect yeah. me. I respect them, his team. and, and so. But I, I personally feel that this could be his last fight. May 6th. And if he does one more in September, I after think, that, I think we're talking, he's getting close to his retirement and, and, and he doesn't have to give 
the fans or the boxing world, the fight that, oh, he has to fight Benavides. No, he doesn't. He Does, doesn't who do you think wins in that fight? You know what? Now, now at this point, I probably think Benavides. Really? I have, I've always, I've That's always said, crazy. I have always said and thought that Canelo would beat Benavides. I said it, you know, a year, two years ago, but from Canelo's last two performances, I don't think he's got the hunger anymore. I think he already, I think he's already looking and planning his retirement. I think he's already doing so much things outside of boxing. You know, he owns gas stations and liquor stores in, in Mexico, and, and he's already made so much money that... He's good. He's good. And, At and, this point, it's just for the love. He, he doesn't have to please the world by saying, oh, you have to fight another Mexican. No, you don't. He doesn't have to. He calls the shots. He fights whoever he, he wants and still make $30, $40 million. So I think, I think he's, a, he's, a, he's at a point where, he'll, where he's very close to retiring. So Benavides takes it. Uh, right now, right now, that's the only reason because Benavides is still hungry. He's hungry as fuck. Benavides is still hungry. He's big, he's strong, he's fast. Canelo, I didn't see that hunger anymore in his, in his fight against Triple G, the last fight against Triple G. You know, I think we all thought. His skill he, level's still fucking crazy. Yeah, skill level there, but I, I think his, his, his heart, his mind is already like, kind of like, I don't want to take those chances. I think he should have gone out to try to knock him out. And he didn't. He did enough just to win. I think the last three or four rounds, Triple G is the one that actually... He was trying his best trying, to fucking get and, it out and, of there. And Canelo, and Canelo played it smart on the defense side, defensive side. So I think that's already the, a sign of him not really wanting it that bad anymore. Mm -hmm. Before, he would go out there for the kill. Now he's kind of chilling, like holding back a little. So I think that's the only reason. Hopefully I'm wrong, and hopefully we see a killer in his next fight, and then he goes and beats the shot of Bivol. Then I'm like, oh shit, he's then, then, then he'll beat then he'll beat Benavides the way. But I don't see that anymore. Who's the kid that just fought on the last card that was calling out Benavides? Oh, uh, Morel. Morel. I didn't want to that say his name wrong. Bad. Morel. Yeah. Hey, that was crazy. Yeah, that was tough, man. You see a future for him? I think so. I think I think that's that's gonna be one of those guys that, uh, especially fighting on on, on those pay per view events like he did last Saturday. Everybody seen him. We all seen him. We're now like, we saw that. That, that was, was amazing. My, that was actually my first time seeing him, like uh, uh, one of his full fights. I've seen clips. highlights, clips, but this was one of the, uh, we're fucking lesson around. We didn't see much and either. We didn't see much. I don't think the, you need to see too but much. But the way he did it, he's beautiful. Be a, he's a big threat for anybody at 168. So then for Morel Benavides, what do you think? That's a badass fight. If they, if they do, uh, I, I heard that they might be doing it. In Supposedly. September. That's what I heard. So that's just badass. What do you think, generally speaking, what do you think about the future of boxing? I think it's, fuck, it's got great, you know, you know, fighters like Ryan Garcia, who, even though he just lost, he's still a big... No, he's still a big man. He became a, even a bigger star now. Oh, he's out of here. You Catapulted. Know, he's a new mean? Floyd. Then you got, you got, hopefully, we, if we ever see the, the, the Walter Ray fight between Spence and, and Crawford, that's huge also. Then you got Inui fighting Fulton for the, for the uh, undisputed title. Those, those fights are huge, huge. bro. Then, then we go to the smaller weight classes. Then we got Franco, we got Bam, who are going to be, I know that, you know, they'll be among those top names. You already got Chocolatito and Guy, you already making a lot of noise. Then we have some Japanese guys that one weight that are fucking badass. I can't, I don't know their names, you know, I can't pronounce their names. But yeah. <laughs> there are some badass young fighters that are one weight. So I think Bob, the heavyweight, you know, for like 20 years, 20 years we it's been kind of dead dead but now well not it, dead but not as crazy it was dead bro for a, for a while you know you gotta after, give Kitchener a little Tyson, love and yeah, shit like but that it's from Europe nobody really yeah we don't get, States, yeah yeah it's we not that we, we don't give really, a fuck but we don't give yeah, a fuck they're not from we didn't really here. give a fuck about Klitschko <laughs> honestly we no, didn't really yeah, give yeah, a fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> since Tyson I think I respect think, Klitschko respect yeah no obviously respect yeah, but we didn't give a fuck honestly no facts and 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 now with with Tyson Fury you know uh what's his name Tyson Andrew Fury is a different kind champion. of over the water you know, kind of just, guy though that fool got fucking issues so he's but tight. It did, but 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 it made a bit, you know heavyweights brought, it's back, brought it back it's back it's back it's the it's, it's the it's the weight division that everybody wanted to see like in the early 90s in the 80s that's the, that's the divisions everybody wanted to see. Is it true? You know better than me, probably. Ruiz versus fucking uh, Ruiz versus Fury. Is that, a, is that a thing? I've been hearing a lot about I saw that. I fucking flyer, Hopefully. but you know motherfuckers make flyers all I've the time. I've been hearing that a lot shit. about that. Hopefully it is, because that's an interesting fight. Who do you got? Well, who do you got and who's going to win? Well, I, I, would, I would obviously support and, 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 and hope to see. The, well, we're f around, so yeah. That exactly. Andy Ruiz win. But I, th I, th I think I think uh, Tyson Fury is just too smart, man. He's, he's the man. Is he's he the too man? Big, too smart. The thing is that he's not very skillful. Like like I can't say, 
you know, I could say fucking Roy Jones had skills, you know what I mean? Like, he's, you know, uh, Muhammad Ali, fucking, you know, Evander Holyfield. Great, I think, I think Tyson Fury is more, he's just, he's just so big, knows how to use his distance, distance. he'll push you, he'll hold you. He his just, ring IQ is he fire. Just, he has beautiful ring IQ and nobody can beat it. Nobody, even though he's not the best, the most talented Do you fighter. think he has more power than, than, than Wilder? No. Where I'm going with that is if Andy Ruiz has more power than Wilder and he fucking hits Fury, then yeah, it might no, be like that. I don't think Andy Ruiz has more power than, than Wilder. I think Wilder is one of those powers that you, you don't Wilder's see that the often. bronze bomber, You don't see right? that often, bro. Crazy that, shit. That's a crazy power, I think, yeah. What do you think about Spence versus Crawford? You, you, you were on the opposite end of fucking Spence, so does he possess real Spence power? Either, bro. Uh, you know what? The real power, probably not. I think Crawford possesses more power. At that division, uh, and and honestly, I I very slightly like very little like it's like a 50-50 fight, but I think I favor I favor Crawford to pull it off. I think he's just got a little bit more in him to to pull that one off. But it, it's a 50-50 fight. Do you think Crawford fights enough to be getting all the love that he gets? I'm not hating. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm a Crawford well, fan too. He, but... I, I think he's he's way behind. That. Or do you think they're ducking him and he's just kind of asked out right well, there? Well, I think I think he's he's also he, you know. He's also had those opportunities to go out there and make those fights happen, and they haven't happened. So, you know, when he left top rank... Is that a managerial issue? Promoter issue? It has something, something to do with that, because after, after he left top rank, you know, where else do you want to go? If, you, if you're actually looking for those big fights, you're going to go to PBC to try to fight, you know, all those big names, you know, especially the, the Spence fight. But he didn't. He chose somewhere else. Maybe because of the money, yes, but... You know, eventually, sometimes you have to take those fights. Maybe, you know, and we're not talking about, you know, small amounts. You know, if, if they offered you 15 million, but you want 20, well, fuck, take the 15. You, you know, it's and not win. that much of a loss. Yeah, and, and win. And come and back and get 25. Then you fucking take 25. Yep. No, but he didn't do it. You know, I don't really know how this, I, I have no idea yeah, how, yeah, yeah, how yeah, the numbers yeah, yeah, went. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But just for speculation purposes, yeah. You, sometimes yeah, you really. have to, you know, if you want those fights, you have to do something, something like that. Fight, other fighters have done it, but but then they go out there and win, and they become superstars. So Crawford overspends I, by a very slight, you know. I don't know. I just I think it's a fifty-fifty, but I do pick Crawford. Just I don't know. Just I think there's a little bit more in them to 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 want to win. I just I just see it like that. I I could be wrong, and I wouldn't be surprised if I'm wrong. What are some of your dream matchups? Period. Fantasy and then for real with well, real fighters. fights that I would like to see right like now. Like right now, obviously with 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 uh, with uh, with just boxing in general, Spence versus Crawford. Epic. That's 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 a fight that I would love to see. You know, fighters that would that would do something good for me. For my, you know, I would probably say you know Franco versus Chocolatito, and uh, and uh, his brother uh, Bam, you know versus Gallo Estrada. You know what I mean? Those would be my dream fights. Do you think if Fury versus uh, Joshua would have ever happened, you think Fury would have took it? You know what? At this point right now, yes. Uh, I worked with Joshua, and Joshua also hits very hard. Joshua is very skillful, but right now, after his loss with, 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 uh, with, with Andy, and his performances haven't been that greater than he loses to, to, uh, to Usyk, I think he needs a few good wins before he even talks about fighting those big fights. I think right now at this moment he needs the he needs the he needs two or three pick em fights to build up his confidence and get back in there to be able to challenge those guys because he's got skills and he's got great power. No, he's I don't I don't know who it's harder him or or Wilder or Wilder because I've never felt Wilder's power. I felt uh, yeah, you were on the mitts or the body exactly. Thing so I know shit. he hits hard. You know what I mean? He hits crazy hard. Do you think Usyk gets the respect he deserves as a champ? I think Usyk is the best fighter out there right now, especially in the, in the heavyweight division. I don't know if he'll beat Tyson Fury That's what because of the, the, the size. The, it's just crazy. It's just crazy, but skills-wise, he's the best. And he hasn't got that respect that much, but he is. He's the best. He should be making $100 million a fight. Let's circle back to some, to some current events. What do you think about... Do you think Ryan Garcia quit? You know what... Uh, I watch I've, the fight. You watch the fight. I've, I've been, I've been, I've been hit with body shots before, and hurt, bro. You know, it looked like he couldn't fucking breathe. Those fucking punches hurt. You know, we've seen 
you know, we've seen fighters like 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 uh, Marcos Maidana when he got hit by Amir Khan, he was fucking rolling on the floor, crying about it, but still managed to get up. If if you see somebody like Ryan, you know, get hit with a body shot, push back, push back, and couldn't hold it, couldn't hold it, takes a knee. That, that was her hurting. shit, yeah. <laughs> that shit was hurting. No, he, because like he said, he tried, pulled like, back, like, he stayed tries up. To, you could see his face. When he got hit, you see his face, and then pulls out, like, tries to hold it. Couldn't <sighs> fuck around. I couldn't do it. It happened. That's, people, people that have never been hit to the body don't know what it feels And they about. gave him, I'm sure that shit hurts. the referee would have fucking not counted him out had he gotten if up If he got up, oh, they would have run away, though. They would have continued. But it was just too much. Those punches hurt. How good is Tank, in your opinion? Tank is good, bro. Strong, patient, you know. Sometimes to a point where I'm thinking, fuck. Uh, he lost a lot of rounds against against uh, Hector Garcia. Rollis was actually doing really good. Or you know, just to mention those two names, but not, but he's just too smart. He he's purposely doing that. He's 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 purposely like kind of, he's doing. kind of kind of letting them get a little yeah, bit come on, to come catch. Yeah. It's like look look at with 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 uh, with Ryan. You know, coming up, Ryan was bah, 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 landing, landing, throwing punches. Boom. Boom and drops him. I couldn't believe the way he did Leo. That it's, shit was crazy. Boom and boom picks it at the right time. And that was Leo, crazy. And Leo was actually winning some of the That's maybe, what I'm saying. Maybe it was ahead of maybe, maybe it was winning. I think so, personally. But you know, he just fans, you know, he's too smart in box. He's too smart. And and the thing is that he could get away with it because he hit so hard. He hit so hard that one punch gonna end it. Do you think as Rasa maybe we're going too hard on Ryan? Like, I don't mean feel sorry for him because he's us. I mean, do you think we're going too hard on him because he's us? Like, hey, if we're fucking warriors, I, you should have never fucking I, I think, go out on your shield. I think so. I think so. And more because he's already been, you know, he, he even before this fight, he's already been the, the social media star, not really a boxer. He's just, but he, that kid has a lot of potential. He has talent, yeah. He's got a lot of potential. He's fast, strong. He just needs a little bit of guidance. You know, he needs to, 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 to listen to a, maybe, I don't know how camp went, but from a comment that, that Joe Goosen made saying, you know, Ryan, heard that. you kind of got to follow what he says because he already knows what he's got to do. Then why the fuck are you the trainer? Then why are you the trainer? I think, I think he needs to listen to a trainer and, and, and prepare and do, do, do what's right. And I think the kid has a lot of potential. Man. I think the kid could be the face of boxing after Canelo, even though, even after he lost. No, yeah, he's, you could lose. He's Mexican American. He's, well, he's Canelo got, lost to fucking Mayweather yeah, and look at him exactly, now. Exactly, exactly. And he's got such a big following that he could be the face of boxing. Do you think that would have happened if he would have stayed with Reynoso? I think with Reynoso, he would have to do stuff. You know, he would have to. No, he, he would be forced to, to fight, to yeah. train. Maybe that's the reason he left. I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. But but maybe that's the reason. Maybe maybe uh, Reynoso was too focused on, on Canelo. That's also another reason. Because he also has uh, guys like Oscar Valdez, who are Mexican. Maybe Reynoso favored the real full blood in Mexicans. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? Ryan but you know what I mean? Exactly. But you know what I mean? When habla español. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know the reason. But but uh but do I think he would have done better? Well I think Reynoso would have come up with a really good game plan. I don't know if he would have won still, but he would have you know I think I think I think I, I thought think Ryan, Ryan was doing good. I think Ryan just I think he was. So he was that the round where he got dropped he clearly won it. That's why the judges one judge gave it a 10-10, the other ones gave it a 10-9. It's After, supposed to be a 10-8. Exactly. No, but it was, yeah, exactly. That shit was that because, crazy. Because she was winning that round. So yeah, I, I also said right after, I think that's a, it, it won't be a 10-8. It's going to be a 10-9. Facts. Because because he won the whole round. Do you ever give any other trainers love? Who are the good trainers? Oh, man, I, I always, bro, you know, we, we work so close with so many different trainers that, you know, if I need sparring, I call them, they send me, or if they need it, they, I send it to them. Joe Diaz from, from Coachella, Indio. They have, uh, they have their boxing gym over there. They have their stable. They have their fighters. But anytime he needs sparring, Boom. you know, for this fight, uh, uh, he, uh, his fighter bully, that fight Rosado, one of my guys was his sparring partner, so he was driving over there on sparring days, sparring with him. Hey, uh, Bully, that shit was crazy. And, 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 and whenever I need sparring, he brings guys over here too. Uh, Manny Robles. Was Gabriel thing. supposed to win that fight? No, no. He wasn't supposed he to He won win the that. first one, because that was a rematch. Oh, that's a rematch. Gab Gabriel Salvo knocked him out cold the first time they fought. But even though, even though he knocked him out, he wasn't supposed to win the first one, and now they did the rematch. And it went the way it was supposed to. And it went the way it was supposed to, yeah.
I think Gabriel did better, better than, than, than anybody else expected because people were probably expecting uh, Gabriel to get knocked out, and he didn't. That was kind of crazy. And I saw Bully. I'm not, I wasn't too familiar with Bully, and I saw the way he was treating him. I was like, it's a strong kid, man. Who the fuck is this like fool? Like, why is he doing this He's too this fucking school. strong. That kid's strong. That kid's strong. And he, my guy's, t you know, that guy that's, that has a with him say that, that fucker hits hard. Yeah. So, you know, those, those are, the, you know, those here in Southern California, those are the two that we get along really well because, you know, we're close to each other. I'm in the middle. So I'm, I'm like one hour from, from India and one hour from LA. So, yeah, so we, 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 we switch around, you know, and I then I'm also. Gym was going to be far as it wasn't that far. It wasn't that far. I'm also, I'm also like an hour away from San Diego, a little over an hour from San Diego. So also, I've also sent some of my fighters to go spar over there. I ate it and also, you know, actually one of my fighters sparred, uh, Ryan Garcia's last fight. One of my fighters was the one sparring with it. So, you know, so I'm in the middle of, of three different great gyms, great trainers where I could move around and, and get different sparring. You got any beef with any trainers? Not really, bro. Not really. I, uh, I respect everybody for what they're doing. Sometimes, sometimes there's, there's little things that I might find a little disrespectful. Like, for example, I've respected this man so much for so many years for his knowledge in boxing. He's, 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 a, he's a professor at it, uh, Salas. But in this last fight that we had with Franco and Ioka, he was training Ioka. And every fighter celebrates before the, before the, before the once the, the last bell rings, that's it. Everybody celebrates with their hands up, you know. Win or lose, everybody does, you know. Of course. Because it's, it's, it's a celebration. It's a so what I always do is I go to my opponent's corner, great fight. Before, even before they announce the decision, great fight, great fight. To fight, hey, you did a great job. You know, whatever it is, win or lose. What I didn't like about Salas was that he came into the ring straight to Franco. Franco was lifting his hands. You didn't win, you know, in Spanish. You didn't win. Drop those hands, you know. You, and then he was kind of clowning, you know, before the, when they were giving the uh, the decision, he was like kind of burlando, say, like like laughing at us, like like bro, like come on, bro, wait for the so decision. Extra shit, so yeah. that's my son got into it with him. That's something I didn't like. Uh, I could say I probably lost a little bit of respect for him because I've had conversations with him. He has a lot of knowledge cool in boxing. Fuck, yeah. That fucker has knowledge in boxing. He's been around, you know. One of my title defenses was against one of his fighters. I, I beat one of his fighters in 93. So he's, that's he's a little thing for you, low-key. He's, <laughs> well, he's, so, he's been around so long and, and so much knowledge. I respect him. I learned from him. But that was a little disrespectful. But besides that, I was still, you know, I'm not going to be mad at him. I'm not going to try to kick his ass. You know, I'm still going to shake his hand when we, meet again, couple, yeah. when we meet again in Japan next month, no, in June. Because we're going to do a rematch over there. So, so you know, I'm, I'm not going to go out there and try to... I'm labeling this clip. Robert got beef with who? That's <laughs> fucking up. Nah, you know what? Uh, Salas, like I'm telling you, he's got so much knowledge for boxing. That was a little disrespectful. But, it, you know, I also understand. You know, he wanted his fighter to win. He probably thought his fighter won, you know, so. It is, it is. It is what it is. Anything you would tell young boxers coming up? This is our last one. Anything you would tell young boxers coming up? You know what? In boxing, you have to be so dedicated, man. Yeah. You know, discipline is the most important thing. Obviously, if you have, if you have the... You know, the, the, some of the main factors, which I'll, I'll mention, you know, obviously power is one of the main factors. Uh, you have to have good defense also. You have to have the heart to want it. You know, it's not, it's not, I'm not saying about the heart where you're not afraid of anything and you're going to go out there and, 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 and if they have a, if they have a gun, you don't care. You're going to put your chest. That's been stupid. You know, I, I think the heart, to, to go through the hard trainings, to go through the diets, to go through the sacrifices, staying away from home, you know, being, you know, in training camps, like most of my fighters that come from Brazil, from Texas, from Iowa, from wherever, for two, three months at a time, those are sacrifices. You have to, you have, to have the heart for that. The heart to, to stay on a diet, to eat healthy, to, 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 to drink nothing but water, you know, you know what I mean? Because all those are sacrifices. It's major shit. If you don't have that, then do something else. You know, but any little kid here, you know, in my gym, you know, that's not a professional fighter yet, the me I always tell them, your number one has to be school. Stay in school. Stay in school because boxing is not for everybody. And you see 20, 30 fighters, professional fighters training in my gym, 
and 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 the How list and the list goes on. Boom! All the and 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 only two have made it to become champions from from the group that we have. Thirty of them. Some Josh crazy and fucking Dan, odds. Only two have made made it to become world champions. So so what does that say? That it's a small percentage that you're gonna make it. Stay in school. I, I always tell the kids: stay in school. Make sure school is number one and boxing is number two. Until it's fight week. You know? <laughs> <laughs> then you got to go kick some ass. <laughs> last question, last question, just because we're crossing my mind. What do you think about the rehydration clause in general? Not just for Ryan, but just in yeah, general. Yeah, you know what? Uh, that's why... For it, against it? I'm against it. Why, you know, if there's a, if there's a weight uh, contract, our championship fight, 135, and you guys make weight the day of the weigh-in, then why the fuck do you have to make another weight? That's, you know, Mayweather, I don't know, I think Canelo, they, they started doing stuff like that. I don't even know if Oscar had any of those when he was fighting. Honestly, I don't really know. But I, I'm going to go back to this last uh, Saturday fight with, with Tank and, uh, and, 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 uh, and Ryan. Tank had never done that. Tank had fought bigger guys. So to me, to me, that was a little bit of... of that, that kind of gives me a little bit, a little negative uh, things to say, you know, that Tank didn't have to do that. Why did he? That was, a was he worried? Yeah. Was, he, was that smart? Yeah, maybe it was smart, but it, to me, to the kind of like, well, you had to do that to beat Ryan? Is that the only way you thought, you know, not, you know making him drop those last two pounds? Because Ryan had never made 136 like in two years. And then he has to, you know, he has to watch his weight the next day at 11 in the morning or something. So that's, that's kind of taking advantage of, of something that, uh, that, uh, that's not needed, that was not, wasn't it wasn't necessary. necessary at all. And he did. So that still kind of gives me that little, why did he do it? Was he worried? Was he afraid? Was he scared? Because shouldn't have done it. Plus, especially if it's the first time he ever did it. He didn't do it to Barrios, who was a much bigger much guy. Much bigger. Yeah, I think I saw a clip where you said some shit like that. So, so I don't think he, I don't think that was necessary. I don't think, we're, and and that kind of gives us, you know, it gives us the uh, the idea that he was worried that what if he didn't do it? Now everybody's everybody's what thinking if, what if this, what if that? What if he didn't do that to Ryan? Maybe he wouldn't have got him with that body shot. Maybe he wouldn't have hurt him that bad with because those last two pounds fuckers make a hurt. Crazy those difference. fucking make a difference. So now now Ryan could could easily say his team could say his promoters could say. I could say, even though I have nothing to do with Ryan or with with Tank, that shit made a fucking, difference. That shit made a difference because you made him lose those last two pounds, or or you didn't get you didn't let him gain that much weight till the next day because you were worried. So maybe that made a difference. Maybe that's what made the difference, uh, and that's why that that punch hurt so bad, and that's why he couldn't get up because because so 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 that's gonna be there. If it would have been just. No weight class, no nothing. And he goes out and, and, and he probably would have beat him the same way. Everybody would have been, no, no excuses. You beat him, you're, the, you're a badass. But now there's that question, why did he do that? What do you think about them saying that there was a mole in the camp and that they knew that he was hurt before and this and that? I read a little bit about that. Uh, I think they said, I think it was something, a, a sparring partner, I think it was the one that said something. Because I think they said that he hurt his rib in sparring. So, you know... It's possible. Plus, do you guys make fucking uh, the people sign non-disclosure no, agreements? No, never, never do. Never do. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> Especially in those magnitude fights, those fights that big, yes. But but look, the thing is that not one single fighter, I've heard you hear it so many times, and my own fighters could probably say it, I'm 100% ready. I'm un Ain't nobody 100%. You know why? Because you already went through months of hard sparring, Dieting, running, so there's always knee injuries, elbow injuries, uh, whatever. There's, there's, there's fighters that, that you know, do their medicals two months before the fight. They do their medicals two months before the fight. After that, they go through the fucking hard, hard the training, hard, shit. hard sparring. So they do the MRIs, they do all that, and everything's good. But then I'm still going to go two months of hard sparring. So how do you know you don't get a concussion? How do you know you didn't get, you know, a lot of fighters get, get dropped. Fucked up, yeah. A lot of fighters get knocked down and sparring. Low key. They get up and two weeks later, they're still going to fight. They're not 100%. Is there any issues with like heads 
And boxing or not really? Because fools are getting tested all the time, right? There's, there's been a lot of issues lately, bro. A lot. Because everybody wants to take that advantage. Everybody hires those 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 guys that, that know how to do that shit. But sometimes they they find a way to, you know, most of the time they know how to clean it up around and and, 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 and test negative. But then there's those times where, where they do test positive and uh, you know, how do you feel about putting your boxers against foods that could possibly or camps that are known for that? Weird shit? Well, if, if there's a camp that's already planning on doing stuff like that, that's already cheating. That's Facts. what you're already thinking you want to cheat to win. And in this sport, we have to clean it out by 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 not allowing that. But there's no way we could do that. There's no way we could do that. So many fighters take a whole year off. Maybe they're taking it off on purpose. Look around to do all that shit and then come back strong. You know, I don't know. But, uh, you know, it, it sucks, you know, but there's nothing we could do. There's so much going out there that a, a lot of fighters end up doing stuff like that. Fuck it. Anything you want to leave the people with, my dog? I think we, we went through a lot of things. That was awesome, bro. It's Thank actually so fucking much. badass. All right. That was cool. You know what it is? I'm right here with the man, the myth, the legend, Robert Garcia. Talk your shit in the comments, but make sure you show the man love and respect. The sauce.